Hi everyone, welcome to Bake Shop 2. Today we're going to be lecturing on Bake Shop ingredients, our quick bread methods, and to review the creaming method. So I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see my PowerPoint. This PowerPoint is also posted on Canvas so you guys can follow along with that as well. Okay, so some of the items that we're gonna go over today are our baking ingredients, uh, the different measurements that we use in the bake shop, gluten, the baking process, we're going to skip yeast for today and move on to our dough mixing methods. So these are our different ingredients that we work with in the bake shop. So I just wanted to go over each one individually just to review what the ingredients are, how we work with them, and why they are important in our baking process. So flowers. Where does flour come from? Flour comes from the wheat kernel. So if you look at my screen, you can see here, this is your wheat kernel. So if you remember from Big Shop 1, your wheat kernel is broken down into three parts. You have your endosperm, the bran, and the germ. The bran is what's on the outside of your wheat kernel. So that's the protection layer. Your germ, all the way on the bottom, is where your healthy fats and your vitamins are. And the endosperm right here is where most of, or all of your white flour is harvested from. So in the bake shop, we work with whole wheat flour, bread flour, cake flour, all-purpose flour, um, pastry flour. And the difference between all these flours is the protein content. So your protein is higher the more that it's harvested from the endosperm. So if you have your whole endosperm harvested, you have your bread flour. Your bread flour is about a 12% protein. As you move closer and closer to the center of your endosperm, you're increasing your starch content, but you are decreasing your protein content. So why is this important? In Big Shop 1, we worked mostly with bread flour because the high protein is what gave us the structure that we needed to develop our bread strength. So your gluten is what enables you to trap your byproducts of fermentation and to give you volume and elasticity in your breads. So if you remember back to Big Shop 1, we did a lot of dough mixing methods that enabled us to develop our gluten. It was all about getting that gluten super strong, super tight, and really um, working with our two gluten proteins. So we're going to talk about that when we move into gluten. But for now, just keep in mind that your flowers are harvested from your wheat kernel and all white flours come from the endosperm. Whole wheat flour comes from the entire wheat kernel. So in your whole wheat flour, you have bran, germ, and your endosperm. And that's what's giving you your color and your texture in your whole wheat flour. A meal differs from flour in um, the size that your particles are ground down to. So your meal would be more like cornmeal, almond meal, different nuts, um, oats. So you're able to take different um, grains and turn them into meals. But a meal is usually not as fine as flour particles are. In the bake shop, we work with different kinds of starches. So in bake shop two, the main starch that we work with is cornstarch. So cornstarch enables you to thicken things. So if you think back to our pastry cream demos, you'll remember that we make a slurry with 10% of our milk and our cornstarch. Our cornstarch is mixed with the milk to make a slurry. Our slurry is then mixed with our eggs and our sugar to create a liaison. And your li liaison is thickening your pastry cream into a custard. Other starches that you might work with when you move into um, kind of finer pastry work would be instant starches and uh, waxy maize starches. So a waxy maize starch is what we call a modified starch. So modified starches come from a different type of corn 
and they um, enable you to to thicken like um, like a pie filling or a custard filling, and it doesn't leave a cloudy texture inside of your filling, and also allows you to freeze it and thaw it, and it doesn't affect its thickening process. In a cornstarch, like if we were to make pastry cream and we weren't gonna be using it for another week, you wouldn't wanna freeze it because when you defrost it, it starts to separate. So cornstarch does not allow you to freeze things. Modified starches enable the baker to make a pie, thicken it with a modified cornstarch, freeze it, defrost it, and sell it, and there's no compromising in terms of the texture and the clarity in the filling. Instant starches are also known as cold processed starches. So instant starches are made so that you don't need to boil the starch to be able to activate it. Corn starch needs to be boiled to be activated. Instant starches you can blend into a cold fruit sauce and it will thicken it on the spot without having to activate it by heating. So for, for this class, just worry about corn starch. Different types of fats that we work with in the bake shop would be whole butter, clarified butter, shortening, fluid flex, um, all of your different fats are going to do different things. So um, when we talk about pie dough, a lot of people use shortening in pie dough. And that's because it gives you a better jump in the oven, meaning it gives you, it creates more steam because of its uh, burning temperature. And that steam in the oven is acting as a leavener and it's going to give you more flakiness in texture if you're using it in biscuits or scones or pie dough. Um, I don't like to use shortening because I don't like the mouthfeel that it leaves on my tongue. It kind of leaves a little bit of like a, like a waxy kind of feeling on your tongue and it prevents you from tasting other items that you're eating. So I prefer to use whole butter, um, but there are different fats for different purposes. Fluid Flex is a product used in um, high ratio cakes. So we'll talk about that when we get there. Different sugars that we work with in the bake shop. Granulated sugar, brown sugar, powdered sugar. Um, it's important to recognize in a recipe, if you see uh, your list of ingredients and it says 10X, that's referring to powdered sugar. So the number is referring to how many times it is taking granulated sugar and grinding it down into a powder. So a 10X powdered sugar is much finer than a 6X powdered sugar. It's really uncommon in home recipes to see a product or see a recipe that calls for 6X, but in terms of powdered sugar, we have 10X, 6X, and 4X. So 4X is going to be a little bit um, grainier than your 10X. 10X is going to be very fine. So the most common powdered sugar that you will see is 10X. But what powdered sugar does have in it is cornstarch. So powdered sugar is a combination of granulated sugar and cornstarch that is pulverized down into a very fine powder. Granulated sugar and powdered sugar do not function the same in formulas um, because of that addition of cornstarch. So when we move on to our cookies lecture, you're gonna see that sugar contributes to the amount of spread that a cookie has. So when you put a cookie in the oven um, into, in like a round ball, by the time you pull it out, it's flat and crispy. And the reason for that is because of the granulated sugar. The sugar turns to liquid in the oven and it starts to melt out. Powdered sugar, because it has cornstarch, does not do that. So powdered sugar in a recipe is not going to contribute to spread. Instead, it's gonna kind of hold your cookie a little bit more together, and it's going to give um, a more tender um, mouthfeel to your product. Brown sugar is granulated sugar that has molasses added to it. So um, when they process, raw sugar, they pull the molasses out of it, and that's what gets it from like a kind of tan color to a white color. And then at the end of the refinement process, they add the molasses back into the 
granulated sugar to create brown sugar. The difference between light brown sugar and dark brown sugar is just the amount of molasses that they are adding back into their granulated sugar. Now, something that I always like to advise my students is um, that not all granulated sugars are processed the same way. Um, some sugars are not vegan, and that's because they process sugar through charred animal bones. So as they are refining the sugar, they kind of sift it through um, these charred bones to remove kind of impurities and um, it's it's uh, um, kind of like an organic way of processing it without chemicals. Um, but I, I say that because when you are making a product for someone who is vegan, you want to make sure that you are using a vegan sugar. So it should say on the package, milk. Uh, something important to remember when we are working with pastries is temperature. So when we do our creaming method, you want all of your ingredients to be room temperature, and that includes any liquids that you may have in your formula. Milk, heavy cream, half and half. Eggs, your recipes are going to say either whole egg, egg yolk, or egg white. We try not to get any yolks into our whites when we're separating our eggs so that we can reuse our whites in meringues. The number one enemy of a meringue is fat. So if you look at a whole egg, your fat is in your yolk and your protein is in your white. So you wanna be very careful when you're separating your eggs that you are leaving them totally separate and you're not contaminating your whites with any yolks. Leavening agents. So we have baking powder and baking soda that we're working with in the bake shop. So those would be considered your chemical leaveners. They do two totally different things. So the best way to remember it is baking powder puffs, PP, baking soda spreads, SS. Powder puffs, soda spreads, PPSS. And your salt flavors and spices, we have a lot of different salts that we can work with and they all definitely, le definitely lend different flavors. I prefer to work with either sea salt or kosher salt. Um, iodized salt is kind of um, a thing of the past but um, sea salt has a very clean um, taste to it. Um, I like that sea salt dissolves really easily. Fine sea salt, not coarse sea salt, but um, really any salt is fine to work.